Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the complex zeros of polynomial functions. So the first thing to know about complex zeros in polynomial functions is that they always occur in conjugate pairs. So what does this mean? That means that if we have a polynomial function f of x and it has real coefficients, that if a plus bi, where b does not equal zero, is a zero of the function, then its conjugate a minus bi must also be a zero of the function. So when there's one, there must be the other, no matter what. So based on this information, if 5 minus 6i is a factor of a polynomial, what other number must be a factor of that polynomial? It must be 5 plus 6i, right? The conjugate pair of 5 minus 6i is 5 plus 6i. Okay, so now let's see that in action. Find all the zeros of the function and write the polynomial as a product of linear factors by following these steps. So when we say linear factors, what that means is that the within the factor itself, the exponent of any variable is one. The function we're talking about is f of x equals x to the fourth plus two x cubed minus x squared plus four x minus six. First thing we wanna do is list all possible rational zeros. So remember how we do that, we take the constant, and the constant is negative 6, and we look at the leading coefficient, which I'll just call L, and the leading coefficient is 1, and we look at all of the factors of the constant, that would be positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, positive or negative 3, and positive or negative 6. And we look at all of the factors of the leading coefficient, that would only be positive or negative 1, and the possible rational zeros are taking each of the factors of the constant and writing them as fractions over the factors of the leading coefficient. But in this case, since it's only positive and negative one, it's just gonna be these six, uh, eight values there. So the possible rational zeros would be positive or negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative three, and positive or negative six. Okay, so now we're going to use synthetic division to find rational zeros. So we have eight options. If there are any rational zeros at all, we have eight options to choose from. And that's the eight options that we just listed. So we might use one and it might be wrong, and that's okay. Then we just that we eliminate that one and we try another one. So for example, if we think minus one should be a zero of this, I'm going to try minus one. Then I would write the coefficients and constant of the given function, one, 2, negative 1, 4, and negative 6. And now I'm going to test that. So I bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 2 is 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Oh, it was so close, wasn't it? Oh, we get negative 12. So because we don't end up with a remainder of 0, that tells us that negative 1 is not a rational 0 of the function. So this is a big no. The only time it is is when we end up with a remainder of 0. So negative 1's out. Let's try positive 1. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to list the coefficients and the constant of the given function. And we're going to try this again. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. Hey, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Hooray! So now we found one that worked. So we found at least one rational 0. Okay, success! Um, now, because 1 is a 0, what's the factor that it came from? Remember what it came from? It came from the factor x minus 1. So the fact that 1 is a factor, is a 0, means that there was a factor of x minus 1. So if we want to find the remaining zeros, I might rewrite my function f of x as x minus 1 times x to the third plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6. And now here, what I can do, I, I have my x minus 1, and that one we're done with. We know what the 0 is there. But what about the x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6? It looks like this might be factorable. Now, if it wasn't factorable or if you didn't recognize immediately that was factorable, you could try to find other rational zeros. Um, but since it is factorable, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So this is going to be, I'm going to factor out an x squared because I'm going to group these two together. And that's going to give me x plus 3. Plus, I'm going to group these two together. That's going to be a GCF of 2. That'll be x plus 3. 
And so now we're going to end up with, we have x minus 1, x pl uh, plus 3, x squared plus 2. Okay, so we want to find the remaining zeros. So we have 1 at 1. What about this one here? This would be x plus 3 is equal to 0. So we have another 0 of negative 3. So I'm just going to start my zeros over here. I have negative 3, positive 1. What about this here? We have x squared plus 2. x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. That gives us x squared is equal to negative 2. We take the square root of both sides, and we end up with x is equal to. We took the square root of this side. That means we have to put a plus or minus. So we have positive or negative. The square root of negative 2, we can factor out or take the square root of i. And it would be i times the square root of 2. And as you can see, positive i root 2 and negative i root 2 are complex conjugates of each other. So that did work, right? We have one, we must have the other, and that proved true here. So the rest of my zeros, we have negative i root 2 and positive i root 2. Now, what do these zeros tell us about the graph of the function? Well, anytime that there's a real zero, that's an x-intercept. Um, the imaginary ones are not x-intercepts. So what we know is that this graph will cross the x-axis exactly two times. Okay, and then the final step, complete the linear factorization of the function f of x. And you might say, wait, didn't we do that right here? Now, the problem with right here, we have the x minus 1. Great, that's a linear factor. x plus 3 is a linear factor, but x squared plus 2 is not. x squared is quadratic. So that's where the breakdown happens. Um, you could break it down up there, or sometimes I like to use the zeros and just plug those back in. So I'm going to write the complete linear factorization as f of x is equal to. If minus 3 is a 0, that means that its factor was x plus 3, right, which we saw over here. Then we have our x minus 1. And this right here would be x plus i root 2. And this here would give us x minus i root 2. So this was a degree 4 polynomial. We should have four factors in the complete linear factorization, and we do. We see that the imaginary ones did in fact have complex conjugate, the, the conjugate pairs did end up in the linear factorization. These have been examples of looking at complex zeros of polynomial functions. Thank you for stopping by.